If you're not currently using strict mode in your JavaScript coding, I highly recommend that you start doing it. In this tutorial, we will talk about strict mode and what it can do for your code. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In the examples that I use in these tutorials, you normally see code taken out of context because I'm trying to focus on the concept being taught. This means I don't usually include common design patterns or conventions. And one of those conventions that gets left out is strict mode. And this is a convention I highly recommend you start using if you aren't currently using it. Now, strict mode has been available since ES5. It allows you to opt in to a more restrictive version of JavaScript. This means that you will receive errors in strict mode that you may not receive otherwise. So why would you want to do this? Well, the advantage is that it can help you prevent mistakes by telling you there's an error that would require much more time to figure out if it did not let you know. Now, to opt into strict mode is pretty simple. You simply enter a string like this. And you enter at the top of your JavaScript file. And that puts the entire JavaScript file into strict mode. Now, you can opt in for the entire JavaScript file by placing it at the top like I've just shown. Or you can opt in to only a function. For example, you would place use strict at the top of your function to opt into that. That would look like this. And then we would put use strict right here. And then the rest of the body of the function would come after. Now, some reasons you may want to do it in a function as opposed to at the top of the JavaScript code is if you're combining your JavaScript file with other JavaScript files, if you're doing minification and putting those together, and uStrict is not at the top, it means that it's no longer recognized in strict mode. And so you, want to, you may want to make sure that some functions are for sure using that strict mode. So now, how does strict mode help you? So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the more common issues, and I think some of the more important issues that strict mode prevents. I will also include a link to W3C schools in the description section, and this describes all the situations where strict mode can cause errors that would normally not show up. So the first one I want to show is this. Now, is there anything wrong with that code? Well, according to JavaScript, there is not. If I save this, jump out and refresh and open up the console, there is no error. But what is wrong with this? Well, what we've just done is we've polluted the global namespace. We have assigned a value to a variable without declaring it first. And as such, it attaches it to the global object. For example, there we have it. It's not inside the function. It is attached to that global object. Whereas if we declare it first inside of the defunction, the variable x is not defined. It is not available on the global namespace as we see here. So it doesn't pollute that global namespace. Now, uStrict would prevent this from happening. uStrict would give us an error so that it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't pollute the global namespace. Let me show you that. Go ahead and add that up here, save it, and let's refresh. Now we get an error, uncaught reference error. X is not defined at test. So we're not, it's telling us we haven't declared it yet. If we declare it, then that error goes away. And so that is something that strict mode prevents us from doing, polluting that global namespace with variables. 
All right, let's look at another thing that strict prevents. I'm going to remove strict here really quick to show you the problem that can be encountered. I'm going to, let's see, we'll declare a variable. Now I'll declare it using let, so we're good there. And this is going to be an object. And I'm going to set one of the properties equal to 90 in the object. Now I'm going to set that property so it's not writable. Basically it's a property that we just want to be able to read from. We don't want it changed at all. And so I do that with the define property method as part of object. And I'm going to set the writable attribute of that property to false. Now, right after I do that, and let's say that this is farther down in the code, let's go ahead and try to redefine that property. Set it to 100. And then I'm going to do a console.log to see what it is equal to. So when we do the console.log, we should see 100 showing up because we've changed it. It is set here as 90, then we change it to 100. We should see 100 showing up, right? So let me save that, refresh. We get 90 and we don't get an error. It doesn't tell us that it could not change this property because its writable attribute is set default. It never tells us that. It just doesn't change it. And so that could cause us to really try to figure out what is going on. Why is something we're expecting not happening in some code? So as you can guess, if I turn on strict, and then let's do this again, it gives us an error now. Cannot assign to read only property. It tells us we're not able to do that. And so it would prevent us from making that mistake. All right, one more example. And there, there are several things that the strict mode prevents us from doing. I'm just showing you what I think are some of the more important ones. Others you may think are more important. That's why I'm including that link to the W3C schools. But let's say I have a function that has a really long signature, meaning there are a lot of things that can be passed into it, a lot of data points. And without realizing it, I've given two of the variables the exact same name. Obviously, there would be a lot of others between this. Or I may just not realize that I've done it. And then I'm going to use that to assign to this Y property of, of the OBJ object. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this. We'll just see what that is equal to. And now I'm going to pass in 90 and 110. Save that. Come out here. Refresh. It equals 110. So it is set to the second one that is passed in, not the first one. But notice we get no error. We get no error that we have used this exact same definition up here. However, if we turn on strict mode, as you can probably guess, we get an error. Duplicate parameter name not allowed in this context. So there's three different examples of what strict mode can help you prevent mistakes that it can keep from happening that could create problems that may require more time to solve. So I think it's very important to use strict mode. And if you're not doing it yet, I would recommend that you start including that as a part of your common coding practices. So please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, the circle, the one with my face, the one on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away, or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.